Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G97 and welcome to the video. In this episode, I'm going to be using the AEA6 Corolla at the Expressway. And in this video, I'll show you guys how to get the car and how to re explain how to really get the car. Um, so this whole video is going to be the full build. Of course, showing you guys the car itself, the livery I'll be using just in case you want to copy it. And of course, the main thing, the very key element this setup. So, without no further ado, let's, let's get started with the episode. Now, you can easily get this car fairly early in the game um, if you do the story campaign mode. Uh, here it is right here, just finished in the podium in this particular race and you'll get this car for free. Now, if you don't have it on you right now, let's say you sold it, you have to wait till it shows up again at the used car dealership, which is a pain, but that's the two ways you can get the car. Uh, so here we are at GT Auto at the car maintenance service and you can see we have the new engine swap going to cost us about 135,000 credits now before you guys try it out check it out you have to be at least collector level 50 which is that hot pink number at the top of the screen in order for you guys to purchase the engine now if you not that level yet then hopefully you do have the engine for you to buy an engine swap and I'll show you guys an example on the next clip of how that works. So there's of course our engine swap the freight on the screen, 135,000 credits. We're gonna go ahead and click on it and it's going to be the 3S-GTE-MR2 which is basically the classic 1997 MR2 uh, Toyota. Very iconic game car. I remember using that car a lot in the old days of Grand Chambers of 4 was when I started my campaign story mode. So we're going ahead and click on it after that. Uh, let me show you guys how you get the engine swap. So during the game, you guys will encounter again these tickets uh, that lets you have engine tickets. So here we are at the engine list. Now I'm going to use this for example, okay? So this is not the right engine. Uh, so here we are with the 2J the engine we have a particular car that actually has that engine that says support compatible if you have the mr2 engine swap block and if you see the word compatible with that uh beside it then that lets you know you have the engine for that corolla uh aea6 so here is a older video i did a couple days back using the other corolla uh, in my last episode so this is just for example uh so if you guys do have the mr2 engine it says we're compatible, then you can actually use that as a voucher uh, just in case if you're not yet level 50 and you can't purchase the swap. So, if you guys would like to follow me in the game, here is my profile name, Jeffrey G Tyson YT. That way, whenever you do some of my videos, either on YouTube or on Facebook, um, you guys will be able to follow deliveries that I do share on the videos. That way, it'll make your life a little bit easier. So, here's the delivery I'll be using for this race. Now, one thing I did fail to mention is to make sure you also go ahead and buy the Y kit, the Y body kit, as you also do the swap. Now, it's not going to cost you a whole lot. It's going to cost you about 10,000 credits uh, just to do the, these wide car buy selection. But if you don't follow me yet, those are the three key words. If you want to look up delivery, for yourself which i really recommend doing so because that this livery looks so good um so like i mentioned before make sure you have the white car option in your car currently before you do get the swap otherwise it will not work um it will not upload so here is the setup i have for the corolla starting off of our tire compound choice it's going to be sport heart mediums uh so it's going to be very nice to try those tires out around the track uh suspicion we're going to skip it leave it as is stocked uh, we're going to go down to our differential where it says fully customized. I recommend having your torque and your acceleration set to 5 for your braking. I recommend 45 to 60. Uh, for your downforce, it's going to be set to 149 for the front, 250 for the rear. For your ECU, make sure it's set to 99. Racing transmission, set that to 340. Uh, your turbocharger, make sure it's a high RPM turbocharger kit. Uh, after you do that, make sure you have the anti lag system. Make sure it's set on strong, racing intercooler, uh, your intake exhaust categories, make sure everything is set to racing. Um, after that, you're going to equip your racing brake pads, just the pads itself. And the last thing you need is racing clutch and flywheel. And everything you see on the screen that says install for both the engine tuning and for your bio work is special need as well. So basically every part uh, that you can get your hands on at the tuning shop. And that's going to be it for the steps. So a lot of stuff in this car that really makes it really come to life. 
and as you guys can see the car actually has really good acceleration because this car is very light even though it's not really carrying that much horsepower or much torque um, weighing just below 2,000 pounds so this car is pretty light um, you can see we're just slowly making our way to the front just just crept on to the top 10 uh, now the bad thing is since we do have the racing brake pads we still need to brake fairly early as I actually had to avoid uh, not really creaming the back of anyone back there in the first turn um, so you really have to brake pretty early for this car that's the only negative thing I can think of about this car um, everything else with this car is really good the handling itself is really spectacular um, as you can see here the all four wheels below that white line you can just see how smooth the car it just plants the track as we actually do a little bit slide right in front of the Mercedes Benz which I really thought was really cool because this car is known a lot in the anime series uh, that the driver being able to drift a lot on that uh, on the mountain and so we can make our way to the up the field we're gonna make a little bit of contact with the Porsche uh, but we'll make the move right here to 6th place and then you see we got ourselves a little train in front of us uh, so we're easily going to pick up the GTR and then we're going to also make a move on the RX-7 moving us to P4 so this is just like the anime series um, literally just passing everybody once we get the chance uh, to take that chance so we get a much better momentum compared to the Impreza and the older Supra and just like that all the way to P2 on one lap um, breaking early like I mentioned before and we're going to go all the way to second gear in this first turn now we actually did overshot the corner just a little bit um, and you can see the car actually does struggle a little bit in that last turn uh, but other than that uh, the car is really good not to mention that also carries pretty good speed off that corner um, even though the top speed itself isn't that great um, so the first lap complete overall pretty clean decently quick in my opinion, as we're going to cross the line, it's going to be a 223, or actually a 224, uh, .007. So not too shabby of a first lap, but you can see here the GTR is going to easily pass us as we don't really have that much high speed compared to the rest of the field. We only can pretty much cap around the mid-180s if we're by ourselves without any help with the slipstream. Um, since we got the slipstream, we can actually push to the higher 180s uh, since we got the GTR in front of us. So, Unfortunately, we'll have to rework and have to basically have to remake the move again for P2 again. But we do know we have a really good car um, because we have really good tires. And like I mentioned before, the handling in this car is really good. So just to compare ourselves between us and GTR, our car can actually really turn really well. And we make up a lot of spots or a lot of time on the GTR. Making a move right here for p2 once again and once again we find ourselves trying to see if we can take down the leader so as, as we're coming up to pretty good corners uh, with this car uh, you can see we're easily tracking down the leader pretty quickly uh, just like we did the first lap and once you get done with the first lap the car actually does feel a lot better to drive uh, of course the track is drying up as well which is also a main contributor as well uh, but once the track does begin to dry up, you will, will, will really could tell a huge difference of how smooth and how good the car really feels around these corners. The car has really excellent corner speed. That's why probably what makes it really good around this track. As we can see again, we, we're right close to the leader and we can't quite do anything about it as we once again overshot that turn. Um, so we'll have to wait yet again in our lap, but thankfully we actually do keep P2. Um, when slap 3 rolls around since we had a huge margin between ourselves and the GTR. So fast forward now to lap 3. Here we go again with our favorite corners with this car. And you can see that we're really hunting down the leader very quickly. Getting a lot more momentum out of these corners compared to the Honda. And you'll see here the next couple of corners right here. Make it more time and we're going to make the move right here on the outside and easily clear the Honda and just basically take the lead and just basically run away with it. So let us now fast forward to lap 4. This is going to be our hot lap through the race and you can see this last lap wasn't too bad. We did 209.6 on lap 4 uh, but trust me on lap 5 this is going to be even a faster lap right here. So just in case you guys are, would like to try this car out at Tokyo Expressway, I'll more than glad to show you guys the secret recipe uh, for this car 
basically we're going to break, we're going to get back on the power, all that stuff. So we're going to break just as soon as we cross our first checkpoint. Uh, you might do a little bit trail breaking, but I really recommend just mainly slowing down as much as you possibly can. We're going to go down to second gear, and once you do that, go back to the third gear, back to the throttle, brake a little bit, and then right hand turn, back on the power, through the apex. Uh, like I said, the car has really good, good grip, so you shouldn't really worry about too much of how it handles. Through here, we're going to stay on the throttle, momentarily brake, and then right back to the power as soon as we can. Uh, our next point right here, we're going to brake hard a little bit, then back on the power as soon as we can. We're going to brake close to that 50 yellow sign, third gear through this here, left to right motion, uh, back on the power as well. You might do a little bit power slide through that corner, so just keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to brake in fourth gear to this whole section right here then we're going to go back down third gear then back to fourth just get as much rest as we possibly can back down to third gear and then back to, to fourth gear once we hit the purple on your revs then we're going to 100 yellow sign back down to third gear back on the power we're going to do a, a sharp left turn brick a little bit and then once you see those white lines back on the power and as we go down the hill lead to that very tricky right hand turn hairpin um, very tricky to master. So you're going to break probably around the 225, 250 meters away. Uh, heavy braking employed. Uh, second gear, I really also recommend hopefully you guys stay on the dry part of the track. Just get that much better traction and then straighten the car out. And then the rest of the lap should be full throttle. As you can see, we aced that last turn, gaining a lot of time compared to lap four. And that's going to be it for Tucker Expressway. Uh, so the car really has good acceleration. Uh, Handling is really good as well. Um, has a really good corner speed, and it's going to be a 208.244. So if this car had a little bit more top speed, this would easily be a 207. So here we go. We're going fast forward to lap 10. Um, now just to show you guys a little side note, if you guys do decide to stretch it all the way to lap 10, um, you're going to keep your fuel map to number one about the majority of the race. Lap 10, once you approach the uphill. Um, you're going to switch your fuel map to number two, uh, just like you see right here. And you're going to stay on that mode until you actually come around to the tunnel entrance. Uh, now, at this point, you might run out of fuel like I did right here, which is okay. You might just lose maybe two, three seconds just by coasting. Um, so what we're going to do after that is up to you if you want to do this or not. You can change to a new set of medium, sport mediums if you want to. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and add fuel because we only got two more laps to go in the race. So there's really no need to really change tires. Uh, the tires held up very nicely. So we're going to add fuel and let that be it. And then just do two laps just like that. And that's going to be it for the race. So I was really, really glad of how well this car turned out. It did very well uh, this whole entire race. So we cross the line. It's going to be a 26 25 overall for our race time so a pretty quick uh, pace overall with the Corolla uh, a A6 I really enjoyed how it drove it drove very smooth the whole entire race um, so hopefully this build will help you out in Tokyo Expressway and as you can see here we got the car clean uh, we didn't really wreck anybody there and we got the clearance bonus so hopefully you guys enjoy the video Hopefully this will be the card that will actually help you secure your first win at Tokyo Expressway. If not, uh, then I recommend trying this car at Le Mans uh, as a secondary pick. Or you could just use this car for another grinding car to use for Tokyo Expressway. But I just loved how it handled, especially the way the engine sounded. It just sounds so good um, from that engine. It actually sounded like, like an old 80s uh, GT Cup car, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy the episode. I actually had another run with this car as well. Uh, but I think this particular build right here is a little bit better. The other build was going to be racing mediums. And it did okay-ish, but it wasn't not as quick as this run right here. And I think most of you guys might agree with me. I think y'all uh, actually like being on sport tires on Tokyo Expressway than racing tires anyway. Um, so... Hopefully, like I said, this build will be a big up to you at Tokyo Expressway. Really enjoyed how the car felt. It felt really good the whole entire race. Really enjoyed it. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. And if you did, why not leave a like on the video. And if you guys would like to check out my last episode I did using both the GR Corolla and the new Jimny's XC uh, cars. I also have another thorough 
field guide if you guys want to try those two cars out just in case if this build doesn't help you out. Uh, and you can click on, uh, on the video right about there. Uh, check it out if you want to. You're more welcome to do so. And hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night wherever you might be. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.